Welcome to another Cup of Joe. I am your host, Joe Tumalo. What the? With PG Partner and my guest, I think it's Brian Saber, longtime friend. What the heck? Brian, hello. We're on the air. Hello. Hey, dude. Hello. Oh, yeah, we are. I'm here. I thought maybe you didn't have time to comb your hair or something. What What was that all about? A bag on your head. Uh, you're. I don't know if you're old enough to remember the unknown comic from the. Oh, yes. He was a stand-up yeah. comic that the whole his whole career, he had a bag over his head when he would do his stand-up. You're not that much older than I am. Oh, thank you. So what's that about? A bag <laughs> over your head. Not about. I like well, it. You look good, but. <laughs> It doesn't require much maintenance. Yeah. Yes. That's my inner self you just saw. Really? What does that mean? Well, it means um, that the world sees me as this very confident, articulate trainer, coach, speaker, all these things. And I'm confident about that work because I've been fundraising forever and I think I've got something to say. But I am not one for the spotlight, and I'm not um, not one to be the center of attention and have a lot of focus on me, and I um, uh, need a lot of downtime because I'm an introvert, and um, and I'm an introvert who fundraises and has fundraised successfully, but didn't even know that for a long time. So that's who I am. Yeah, and you've done well. And that, so that's your new book. How many books is that now? Four. Wow. That's, that's a ton books. of... If anybody's ever written a book, and I've written a couple, There, it's a ton of work and patience. <laughs> uh, it's not easy. No, it's not easy. I do want to say, though, that I haven't written a novel with a million characters I have to devise and all these plots and things. I haven't done a... Um, uh, a historical book or a, a nonfiction book with a lot of research. So, and I can't imagine people who do that. My hat is actually off to them because the beauty of my books is that I'm writing what I know already uh, and trying to communicate it in a different format. So not to say it's not a lot of work, but I want to give peeps to this person who sat next to me for a few years in a shared office and was writing a 400 page novel and would write a hundred or 200 words and then throw out half of them and said, how do you do today? And I said, oh, I wrote five pages <laughs> or something. <laughs> and of course the editing process takes forever, but um, yeah. And it's a, it's wonderful to be able to put your thoughts together like that, to actually step back, think about it and do something more cohesive than we generally get to do today. So for those who've been uh, thinking about writing a book and they keep telling themselves, I need, I need, I'm going to write a book, I'm going to write a book. To your point, if you just write five pages a day, one page a day, three pages a day, you can get it done. You can. You just yeah. have to be in it for the long haul. Yeah. And so fundraising for why why this book? <laughs> why this great book? Yeah. Um, I think it's the book that I was meant to write. Uh, and it took me a long time to get to this point and to feel I was ready to write it. But I feel uh, it's an important topic and I am as much as anyone the person to write on it. So much has been said in the last decade or so about introverts, especially since Susan Cain's masterful work, Quiet, which really uh, was a revelation for me and many people. Quiet, the power of the introvert in a world that can't stop talking or something like that. I might get the subtitle wrong. And I encourage everyone to get that book, uh, Introvert and Not, to really understand uh, the power we have, the way we are um, um, uh, misconstrued uh, and why we are valid and valued, should be valued uh, everywhere and are actually devalued. Um, so for 25 years, I fundraised in nonprofits. I was either head of fundraising or the executive director or board chair. And I always thought there was someone else who could do it better because I really don't like large groups, meaning I really don't like being at special events. Uh, I don't like talking on the phone that much. And I, I, I'm 
awkward meeting new people, which surprises people. Once I've met someone, it's okay. But going up to someone, calling on the calling someone I've never met on the phone, any of that put such fear in me. <clears throat> and then I started developing Asking Matters in uh, 2009 with Andrea Kilstead. And we had this idea of the asking styles, like a Myers-Briggs or a DISC, a personality assessment. And uh, an introversion, extroversion was one of our two dichotomies. Uh, and it gave me insight as we developed it into what I had brought to the table and the fact that actually no one has it all. Because the people who might like the things and do well at the things that I don't do well at can't necessarily do the things I do as well as I do. And and so I've been writing these books and talking about introversion, and extroversion, and it just felt like it was time for our field to have a book on the topic specifically for fundraisers. And that's how it came about. Um, it's it's really been a passion project to 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 pull it together. That's cool. And so what are the deliverables for the introvert introverted people that are introverted fundraisers that are watching, listening to this? What are some of the things, ideas, encouragement you want to give them and, and how can they, because I'm an extrovert and I, you know, after studying your stuff, your stuff has been incredibly helpful to me to say, okay, not everybody's an extrovert, Joe. I mean, even just in a social, I'm out, if, if anybody has a dog and I'm out walking or biking, I'm like, I stop, oh my God, the dog, right? And then if the person's like, you know, my initial thought is what's wrong with you? But it's like, oh, wait a minute, I'm an extrovert. I get energy off of other people. They may be more introverted, a little shy, stop put it, trying to put my whatever's on them. Right. So Which is what yeah. managers often do. <clears throat> Actually, there's proof that the higher up you go in the managerial hierarchy, let's say in a company or something, the fewer introverts you find. Now, there could be uh, some uh, some of that could be due to where introverts versus extroverts get their pleasure and reward because introverts get more internal rewards, whereas uh, extroverts get external rewards uh, from external stimuli. So some of it's there, but some of it is the discounting as you found yourself doing of people who just aren't as gregarious wanting to jump into a conversation with yeah. you and such. So the number one thing for introverts is that we tend to be better listeners. You're either talking or you're listening. <laughs> uh, hopefully you're listening if you're not talking. You could be not talking and not listening. But let's assume you are one or the other in a conversation. <clears throat> With donors, we're supposed to listen all the time. And extroverts have a tendency to talk more. And th therefore, they're listening less and learning less. I'm and sorry, what did you say? They're, they're, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> My humor again. Touche, that was very good. Um, so, <laughs> and then I love, and then the introvert loses their train of thought, as I just did, because we also think, we go deeper to think. <clears throat> it's proven that we have introverts, what causes us to be introverts in a way is we have longer neural pathways and we dig deeper into past experiences to formulate our ideas and speak so so we need a little bit more time before we say something to to be as articulate as we want to be they often say the difference between extroverts and introverts is that extroverts talk to think you process and think out loud whereas introverts think and then talk so the rhythm of the conversation is different and it actually serves donor relations well because we have more of a tendency to stop and think of our next question. Now I will say sometimes from nerves, I speed that up, but my natural, what's comfortable to me and uses less of my energy really is sitting back and having that breathing room to listen and then respond and to learn about others. Uh, and not to say that extroverts don't want to learn about others either, but you learn more by listening to what others have to say. So that's the number one benefit. <clears throat> and because we do a lot of listening, we, we tend to have fewer but deeper relationships. We don't 
we we're less likely to go to a bar and be friends with everyone there uh, or go out with different people every night. Uh, we're less likely to enjoy meeting new people. <clears throat> I know when, when, when friends say, oh, I was going to invite so-and-so, my thought is, uh, I, I, I say, oh, that would be lovely. You know, I know they want us to meet. And I'm thinking, oh, I much would have preferred to be just with you. I love one-on-one. -on -one. My whole life is one-on-one, -on -one, um, one -on -one conversations, relationships. Sometimes I'll bring some friends together because I know they have something in common, but never a lot at once, not often. And uh, so it's a matter of honoring that, respecting that, seeing the benefit of that in fundraising. And for in fundraising, that's huge. And I focus on uh, individuals, you know, as, as you do really through major and plan gifts. We do so much work with individuals where the relationship is key. Even if you're working with an institution, though, all of this holds, because whether it's a, a, a foundation giving officer or a corporate marketing person or a government uh, uh, elected official or um, someone who works in in a, a department that funds programs, you're still working with individuals. So, so it it really carries across our industry. So the key takeaways as we wrap up for introverts and maybe people that are just getting into fundraising, maybe they work in another department, which I see all the time. I was yeah. in annual fund. I was doing the handling the direct mail appeals now. I'm migrating over to major gifts where my boss is saying, or I'm an annual fund and my boss is saying, I need you to start actually not just mailing the people, but picking up the phone and make leadership and developing a leadership annual fund program. But I'm an introvert. I'm not like that major gift officer, Sue, down the hall, who's like, oh, Sue, everybody's, you know, everybody loves Sue. How the heck am I going to do this? Yeah, uh, well, it's an interesting point you make, because you're right. A lot of people segue from another piece of fundraising that is less based on all of that personal interaction. And 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 maybe they're in that because that's their comfort zone to start. Yeah. Uh, and I want to say, don't worry about Sue. Sue has her way of doing it and you have yours. And let's remember that half of our donors are going to be introverts, right? This is all on a spectrum. So a lot of our donors will much prefer uh, the quieter approach, um, won't necessarily like a phone call. I hate getting a phone call from someone out of the blue, it, uh, unless it's one of my dearest friends. I'd rather get an email. So um, uh, so keeping in mind that even in terms of the people we're serving, there are a wide range of people, and that means a wide range of personalities are going to work with our donor base. Nice. So I so I say, and I say it in the book, you know, introverts rock and we should go out and do it. And if you're thinking of getting into the field, but thinking, gee, uh, I, I don't know if I'm extroverted enough, I wouldn't worry about that at all. I did it my whole life. I think I did a really great job for organizations and some of those benefits I still see coming to organizations from 10 and 20 years ago, which is what our work's about. And, and everyone can do that. Beautiful. So the book, Fundraising for Introverts, Harnessing Our Powers for What Matters, Brian Saber, mm -hmm. uh, it comes out soon. We're, we're in, uh, this is being broadcast or produced in uh, late August of 2023. And it's coming out in September? It's coming out on September 18th. September 18th. September 18th. And, um, and it will be available anywhere books are sold. A bookstore do you? What's a bookstore? Yeah, what's a bookstore? You know, that so they're, they're still out there. around and they're great. Yeah. And it's nice to go in and buy a book. But you can go into any bookstore in the country today and order any book you want, right? Most bookstores carry only a handful of copies, rel uh, a handful of titles, I should say, relative to everything that's out there. You can go into any bookstore or online and get it in paperback or uh, as an ebook. Great. And how can people get in touch with you, Brian? Because you're doing, you're still doing training, a lot of training. I am. Awesome I do training. training. I do. I do. I speak at conferences. I do. I, I do some consulting. I uh, train boards, all sorts of stuff. Brian at askingmatters.com. Brian at askingmatters, uh, plural.com. Plural.com. Right. You'll find and me. So uh, ah, we raise our mugs. A salute. Grazie mille. Thank you for an, another awesome cup of joe. Thanks, Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. All the best.